pretty much keep my place neat, but I just noticed that I, I didn't leave this drawer open. Even little stuff, I can notice that it's out of place. Colbert suspects some, and he doesn't think it's a random intruder. He believes Baird and Ryan broke in while they had him locked up. It wasn't anything dramatic, but it was enough for me to know that something was wrong. There were no charges filed against me, but even if there were, the bottom line is that that was way, way, way beyond the scope of what they should have been doing. Colbert knows his rights have been violated, and he isn't one to let something like that go. The next morning, he walks back into the 39th precinct and files a detailed complaint against officers Baird and Ryan. Because I knew that the events that occurred were very egregious. And my mindset was to go in and achieve some form of justice. It's an act of bravery that's about to untangle an intricate dark web of deceit and corruption. When you're at war, sometimes you have to come face to face with your enemy. And that's the bottom line. In 1991, Williamson is a rookie agent in the FBI field office in Philadelphia. There was an agent, an older agent there, who um, seemed to just take me under his wing. He walked by one day, and he takes this file, and he flops it down on my desk. He says, hey, kid, you know, take a look at this. It was a complaint lodged by Arthur Colbert, a young African-American man who uh, was a Temple student who was accused of being somebody he wasn't and he had been beaten and roughed up and he had suspected that these police officers had made entry into his home so it, it had all kinds of hallmarks of a real issue so the police looked at it and he sent it down to doj to close the case because it didn't seem like there was enough there to uh, go forward with it But an alarming and tragic event 3,000 miles away puts the nation on high alert and changes the course of this otherwise closed case. Just seven days after Arthur Colbert files his complaint, the horrific images of Rodney King being beaten in Los Angeles captivate and shock the country. Across the nation, all eyes are on police officers and their behavior. In Philadelphia, the murmurs of police corruption become cries for justice. Well, police were very much under the microscope with this story. Things that may have been ignored or accepted by residents were no longer being accepted. In fact, police corruption in the city goes back decades. From the 1924 probe and the 30 corrupt officers, to the early 80s indictment of three police superiors for bribery. And of course, the ongoing fallout of the 1985 move bombing. Philadelphia PD has been through more than its fair share of scandals. This department is broken. So when Arthur Colbert's complaint lands on Agent Williamson's desk, Conditions are ripe for weeding out any and all wrongdoing. With these national civil rights violations being in the forefront, they said, take, a, take another look at it. And it looked like it warranted further investigation. Williamson soon realizes he needs help. We need to find somebody who can retrieve information from the police department that the FBI doesn't have immediate access to. Enter police detective James Danback. One day I was told that you're going to be assigned to the FBI to work a civil rights case. But then they told me it was about police officers. I had never investigated police officers before. It needed to be done. It's not a job that you relish. There's no relish in investigating, you know, the police officers. He was very familiar with all of these officers. His office was literally above, on the floor above, the 39th district. So he would see these guys every day. 
he was intimately familiar with the procedures that police officers follow. So it, it tremendous asset to me and the FBI. One of the first things Williamson and Danback do is interview Arthur Colbert. He was forthcoming, candid, answered our questions. He told us that at that time, Jack Baird and Thomas Ryan took him to an abandoned building of drug house and beat him, played Russian roulette with him, trying to get him to admit that he was a drug dealer named Hakeem. And he was a decent guy. He was just a nice, normal gentleman. Never had a record at all. We truly felt bad for him that he had been victimized. But feeling bad isn't enough. Williamson and Danback need to make sure that Cobra's story rings true. And if it is, does that mean Baird and Ryan are regularly beating, detaining, and pulling guns on innocent civilians? Civil rights cases are really hard to prove. Oftentimes, they're, you know, they become a, a he said, she said kind of a thing. These veteran investigators know it's important to have concrete evidence in cases involving accusations against police. So they look for the abandoned house where Colbert said the officers held him against his will and tried to beat him into confessing to a crime he says he didn't commit. Once we found out that the address was 1518 West Ontario, we took a drive over there, and actually it is a abandoned, it looks like a drug house. Oh, yeah, home next door, I think. But it just looks like somebody did a short rehab on it, right? And put people in. But that door, that was all open. That door was actually ajar when we got it. It was. We walked right in. Right. Once we saw the condition of it, we realized that it was uh, exactly what Arthur had said it was. Every detail that he gave us about the residence uh, was exact. I mean, it was true, even to a chair that was in the middle of the floor that was knocked over. But it's basically the same same look to the house. I just remember this whole area just looked so bad. Like, it was just yeah. bad. That's where it all started. That's it. That's what put the ball rolling. According to Colbert's complaint, Baird and Ryan illegally searched his apartment. When Williamson and Danback learn Colbert lives about 25 minutes away in Sheltonham, they know they're on to something. Sheltonham is well beyond Baird and Ryan's jurisdiction. Philadelphia police officers patrol Philadelphia and, and respond to crime in Philadelphia, but they don't patrol over there. It's just not, not done. We found a nurse who actually remembered coming out of her house to go to work and looking across the street and seeing a Philadelphia marked police car, which in her mind stuck out because that was a very unusual thing. And she noticed standing on the front porch was a police officer. When Dan Beck and Williamson realized the nurse had a clear view of the officer, they pull out a photo display. And she picked him out that it was Thomas Ryan. That was a pivotal moment and it all just starts to come together. FBI agent Jim Williamson and police detective James Danbeck have corroborated much of Arthur Colbert's account of what happened to him the night of February 24th, 1991. They also have proof that officers Jack Baird and Tom Ryan abused their power and operated outside the lines of justice. But is this just an isolated case of police misconduct, or is it more widespread? Williamson and Danback turn their attention to Baird. I think we reviewed something like 14 different uh, performance reviews, and his uh, performance reviews were all, all uh, indicated that he was a highly effective uh, uh, police officer. But when you look at, at this individual, he had an extraordinary number of complaints lodged against him from citizens uh, that he had come across. Those complaints date back nearly 10 years. We found out there was over 23 complaints against Jack Baird. If you're doing your job, you're going to get a complaint. I mean, even I've had a complaint. But that number was high. 
The recurring theme of those complaints, a lot of them were physical violence. And, you know, when you start to look at Arthur Colbert's allegations and then look at the litany of complaints against him, you start to see this pattern tended to lend a lot of credence to what Arthur Colbert had, had alleged.